Well, good morning and welcome to my YouTube channel. So this morning we're heading up, this is probably going to be the last TVR road trip of the year because we're into mid-October mid now and the weather's not going to be great later on unless we get some really dry days. But we're heading up to our vintage classic car re restoration uh, shop. So join us and let's see where this journey takes us this morning. Sheds are allowed as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for coming. This is a gem in a beautiful uh, place here, Milford Vintage Engineering. You know, some of the things that they do here are absolutely amazing. I hope you enjoy it. This is Ian and his good lady, Sarah. Sarah. Um, and uh, Ian, no doubt, will give us a, a few words about what he's doing here and about the amazing work that they do. Um, it really is an absolute gem here. Right. This is Sarah. Sarah knows as much about a lot of what's going on here as I do. Okay, so please feel free to ask her any questions as well. It's not just me. Um, we'll start with the one straight in front of you. 1948 Triumph Roadster, 1800. Um, basically made out of pre-war bits. So it was their idea of a sports car made out of bits that were in service pre-war in the saloons and bits and pieces. Sounds like a TBR. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, it, a lot of this period, it was whatever bits were lying around, you know, army surplus, anything that they could put back into it. There is a lot of aluminium in this because, of course, aluminium uh, was around in large quantities when they stopped making aircraft and bits and pieces. So like Land Rover and other people, they used uh, aluminium, um, but it's also got a lot of steel and the two are bolted together and you get all oh, the wonderful world of corrosion going on. Okay, so this one we did an engine rebuild, a gearbox rebuild, all the suspension, I don't think there was one bit of the suspension that was pointing in the right direction. This is quite interesting, I don't know if you can see, I've got the, the dicky seat open, it's actually really only for children in the back, if you look at the size of the seats, but it's actually got a windscreen as well, which is part of the boot, so that you can put the kids in, in the back and go for a Sunday picnic. Okay, no seat belts, no, you know, no airbags, no nothing, so there you go. <laughs> so, over here, Rolls-Royce Phantom 3. Um, there were only a few of those made, about 300 and something of them produced. It has a V12 engine in it, um, and that is basically a scaled down Merlin engine. It's about a third size Rolls-Royce Merlin engine that's in them. Um, this one is rather sick, as they tend to be. Um, we are actually, at the moment, 
We've got all the big ends off as well. It had a, a funny noise, which you do not want a funny noise in a Phantom 3 engine. Now these have a peculiar bottom end to them. They have two conrods coming onto one journal and you have what is called a fork rod which has a gap in the middle and it has a second journal clamped to the outside of the bearing and then a blade rod that goes in between. So one rod rotates completely on the crankshaft as the crankshaft goes round and the other rod just rocks backwards and forwards on this other journal. While this one unfortunately when they lasted some machining to the bottom end they didn't get any of it concentric so there was a big step in the outer bearing and it just ripped the bearing apart so we're having to get trying to get parts machined and bits and pieces but it's it's an absolute nightmare because you because there's so few of them there are no new parts for that bottom end it, basically we've got to try and recover what is there so it's going to have to go back to white metal it had had a shell conversion last time and this shell conversion was just out of position so it's now going to have to go back to white metal and, and run like that fuse indicators weren't working um, suspension bits and actually when we looked at it he had no front disc pads left we were down to the backings so but it, I think it's probably three years maybe four years since we've seen this car last time he likes to do a lot of the maintenance himself and like a lot of the customers do yeah uh, yeah yep. absolutely so the one behind you on the ramp is a rather tired Rolls-Royce 2530 the engine's pretty poor, but it's actually in for a rewire. Okay, the, the wiring was so, so poor on it, it, it was basically a fire hazard to be out on the road. It, it really was horrendous. It was all bare, bare cables underneath the dash. And the wiring loom for this comes in sections of cable. There is no proper loom, as you would know, a loom in Heelys or your TVRs, every single cable is cut to length and run. So you'll see, same with that one, you'll see capping across the bulkhead and down and round. Well, that's all the cables run up in here and across. Um, it's wired at the connectors with Ross Courtney terminals. So they look like a star. I've probably got some on the, the bench there you can have a look at and then the cables are around round in there and the ends are whipped. So you whip the end of the cables to make it look like it was originally. And we try to reuse as many of the, the plastic markers, but this one, it had a long time out in Africa and actually it's gone for a lot of the plastic stuff. It, it's not, not survived the way it, it should do. Um, so. Um, so. In Africa, it was the um, diplomatic car in Nairobi, and apparently it's had it had the Princess Elizabeth when she was Princess Elizabeth. It's had uh, Mountbatten in it, uh, Montgomery, uh, Princess Margaret, and all sorts of dignitaries have, have been sort of ferried around Nairobi. In, in I think it was the, the late 40s, early 50s. Oh yeah. Oh. And how would it get maintained in Africa? <laughs> Well, hopefully it went to the Rolls-Royce dealership, but I doubt, uh, you know, I mean, it would have... The problem with these Rolls-Royce engines is they'll put up with a lot. I mean, a lot. I mean, if I started this now, you'd be horrified the way that engine sounds. I mean, it should be silent, but it's rattling and clonking away. It, it needs a complete rebuild. But he's doing bits at a time, and that's, that's the bits we're doing at the moment, is getting the, the wiring done. Um, <laughs> Choice. It'll just keep going. going. going yeah, going. until it eventually puts a leg out of bed and then that, that'll... And that will be... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I mean, absolutely. So, nice little MGTC. I think this one is 47. Um, it's not had any work done to it apparently for the last 20 years. But it's got a horrendous amount of backlash when you drive it. It's 
clunk, 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 clunk. The, the half shafts are really badly worn. The hubs are worn. The whole lot is sort of adding up and the, um, the prop shaft, the sliding joint's not been greased in years, so it's dried out and that's also worn. So you've got all this free play all the way through the drive line, so every time you take your foot off and put it back on again, it's a massive amount of clonk. So that, that's what she's in for. Um, so we're, we're taking out the back axle, stripping that down, sorting out all the bits to that. We'll get a new prop shaft for it, or it may be a case of having one made but well, there's a place down in Glasgow that'll, or just outside Glasgow that'll do that. So, and they'll balance them for us as well. So we've got a coach built Bentley R-Type, 1952. Uh, it was a Scottish built body. So the customer, it's been in the one family from new this. So the customer's mother, they actually bought the chassis and the front end of the car and the rest of it was built locally as a shooting brake. So it's a Scottish built car. So it's quite unusual. Yes, it would be ash. Yeah. Is that one completely unique or other? No, they built they built three others, but whether any of the others have survived, we don't know. So, but it, it, this is often around. It, if you go to Glam's or bits and pieces, you'll see this one around. It's normally got a tiger sitting on the roof. I know, and it, it's quite a comedian. There's often a pair of legs sticking out from under the car. So, it's, uh, I like the mud guards. Yes, yeah. So well, well, actually, we've got to replace them because it's hanging off. But that that's that that is that is standard on these. Uh, on a saloon, when you get to this bit, there's a big rubber fits down here and along the sill because the front wheel throws stones at the back arches. So all that area is protected by a rubber mat, which is a complete pain to fit to the car when they're new, yeah. well, newly painted and everything. And you've got to try and get this rubber stuck onto the, to the nice clean bodywork. Is the wood so, original? The wood's all original, yeah. I think there was one bit you can see being spliced in somewhere but they, they take good care of it. Yeah. Can but, I ask you? Yeah. I'm looking at that roof. Yeah, the vinyl roof, yeah. My dad had a Cortina with a roof yeah. like that in the 1960s, yeah, yeah, yeah. so is that yeah. a, a 1950s or earlier type treatment that is it Everflex? Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that'll be Everflex on, on there. Um, that was quite common. That, there's nothing under that. That's just, just lards yeah. oh, right. in there. Okay, so that, that has um, cotton stretched over it, then a padding, and then the Everflex over the top, and the whole lot is sort of tacked and screwed on, and that is the roof surface. Uh, that, that was not uncommon at that time. Um, even my, my wee van out there, to save metal, that has a big section of roof that's just like that. So it's not a structural thing. No, no, no. The front thing. Yeah, that's it. it. Well, you're just carrying it around, so, you know. Yeah. yeah, well, this is the thing. All the cars were on a chassis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of this period. Even the Healy's got a big chassis underneath it. Enjoying this, Fiona? Yes, yes. <laughs> This is Tony's car from Ireland, come all the way over to do the North Coast 500 and popped in for a wee visit. This is a TVRS3.
home safe and sound we've had a great um, day trip um, up to Kirk Michael thanks very much to Stuart Milne and Steve and Julia for organising it from the North East Scotland team um, hopefully we can make a video out of this um, it was really interesting getting shown around the Kirk Michael vintage workshop by Ian and his wife so thanks very much to them so hopefully we can make a video if we do, hopefully this is the end of it and you've seen all the content already. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do because you know it's free. And if you press the bell notification, that will let you know the next time I post a video. So thanks very much for watching and here's to the next video. <laughs>